no, with the exception of the error or the omission that there is a ladies fellowship this coming Thursday evening, half past seven. Ian Abrahams, um, I've made up the title, How Did You Go Out and Grow? And he's going to be talking about plants. You don't really need to be there, because he tells you how to make your garden grow. Feeding plants and what, what plants are called and all sorts of stuff. Um, ladies Fellowship on Thursday. Joan Hagel, Ruth went to visit Joan Hagel yesterday and Joan sent her a regard. So love to everybody. She thanks everybody um, for your ongoing prayer and support. Um, she's been well, which is really good. Um, so love to Joan. Derek very kindly has said, well, why don't we take these flowers round to Joan after worship? She'll really appreciate that. Her parting shot was, don't forget. So it's really good. Thank you, Ruth, for, for passing that on to us. That, that's really um, kind. Thank you. So the newsletter tells you everything else you need to know. We're really looking forward to worship. I just need to finish by saying very happy birthday to Sheila. I'm not allowed to say how old she is, but if you read the newsletter, there may be a slight reveal. <laughs> happy birthday, Sheila. Matt, thank you. Good morning. morning. It's good to see you. To those of you who were here last week, thank you for coming back. <laughs> and if you weren't here last week, then I'm looking forward to getting to know you a bit better. We're going to spend a bit of time this morning where we take some of the things that we started to think about last week and see what they might be saying to us today. And that includes in how we're going to start our time together. Last week, Stephen got Victoria and me to put our good hands behind our back and then challenged us to hold on to a peg in our other hand whilst taking more pegs down from a washing line. And the challenge was to hold on to as many as we could without dropping a peg. Of course, quite quickly in Victoria's case, <laughs> we, we both ended up dropping a peg. But the point of the illustration was that the first peg we'd taken hold of had Jesus written on it. And because we held that peg in the very centre of our hand, however many pegs we might have dropped, Jesus stayed fixed at the centre. And as Stephen encouraged us last week, as we meet together today, we come and we want Jesus to be at the very centre of everything that takes place in our time together. And so we're going to turn to a prayer song first to start our time together today, song number 373. If you're following in the uh, songbook, 373, and uh, there are words that say, Jesus, be the centre. Be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my hope, be my song. There we go. Right, little man. I haven't even started preaching yet, but uh, <laughs> Jesus be the centre. And that might be unfamiliar words to you, so maybe you just want to read the words on the screen and make them your prayer. If you want to sing along, please do. It's, we sing the first two verses, which are already on the screen. Quite a simple little tune, and, uh, and then we sing a short refrain. But let's make this our prayer. We'll stay seated as we sing it together. <laughs>
two or three people would like to bring our time together before God in prayer just now. Shall we pray? So, Lord God, we thank you that you hear us when we pray. Be that our spoken prayers, be those our silent prayers. <coughs> be, those, be that those things going on in our lives that we maybe don't have the words for, but that your spirit and that your son is a seed on our behalf. And Lord God, we do pray that you would be the centre of all that takes place during our time together today. We pray that we would be aware of your presence with us. We'd be aware of your presence and what it's stirring up within us. We pray that we'd have ears open to hear what it is that you're saying, eyes open to see, and hearts open to receive. Lord God, this morning we pause to pray for those in our number who are away at the uh, SSCA this week. For Rudy, for Faye and Daisy. We pray for that week with young people, that it's a week where they would, again, as we pray for ourselves today, know your presence with them. It would be a time of blessing, a time of confirmation, a time of conviction as to what it is that you're saying to them, how it is you're calling them to live. We also pray for the MAA. Uh, which is coming up in a couple of weeks' time, which I'm victorious to hand on to and pray the same for that, that it's a time of closeness with you, encounter with you, experience of you that then changes how life looks away from those special times of coming together. So Lord God, be at the centre. We pray in the through the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Last week we thought about words from Philippians, and the letter to the church in Philippi has been described as a collection of Paul's greatest hits. 
Today we're dipping into his letter to the Ephesians where we find what could be described as another of his greatest hits. The reference is there on the screen if you want to follow along with your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 and words that in my Bible come under the heading of prayer for the Ephesians. Ephesians 3 beginning at verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. In those words that we've just heard, we get a glimpse of Paul's desire for others to share in what has been called his most joyous discovery, that God can live and dwell, and as we started our time off by singing, be at the very centre of all we are and all we're about. The Greek word that has been translated as dwell in verse 17 has also been interpreted to mean to be completely at home. God completely at home in the lives of those who know and love him. These words from Ephesians that we might better associate with a benediction than the main event come from the first part of Paul's letter that Tom Wright describes as being framed with prayer. Chapter 1 begins with an opening shout of praise which is followed by intercession and celebration and then at the end of chapter 3 we have this prayer where Paul prays for those reading that they would experience more of God's fullness, have a deeper experience of all of God's fullness. The prayer that Paul makes in chapter 3 that we've just heard is rooted in his experience of and response to the church coming together and growing as one. And as I think about that, there's so much that speaks into what we thought about last week. And if you weren't here, the recording is online. But as we look forward, both in terms of our time together today, and as we think about this new chapter in the cause history, we're going to be picking up on Paul's three mentions of power. Now, as we think about power, we might think about different things. The power that turns our lights on. Jeremy Clarkson shouting about fast cars. The power that Steve nearly drilled through last week. Or the power in the words of our opening song that might be described as the fire in our hearts, the wind in our sails. Whatever comes to mind. We're going to spend time today thinking about how God strengthens us by his power. We're going to be thinking about how we can have the power ourselves to grasp more of who God is. And then we'll think about how by his power that's at work within us, we can dream and do so much more than we could ever dream up on our own. So that's where we're going in our time together today. But we're going to sing together now. Words associated with the, the coach of the tune the band played 
before our time together. Psalm number 857, if you want to follow in the songbook. And words that say, for God will fill me with his power. He's going to make my life into a miracle, a mighty miracle of grace. It's a song of testimony, but it's an unusual testimony because it's a testimony of intent. And there are words that just as Gillian prayed for us, that made me think, if God is going to do this in our lives individually, then what's he able to do through us? together. The band are going to help us and I invite you to stand as we sing the three verses song two. Thank you God. Of you, 
verse 16 of our reading today, we, strength, we read about being strengthened with power in our inner being. And as I was looking into it, as I was thinking about what that might mean for us today, one commentator almost describes it in terms of the three-legged stool. We're strengthened in our knowing and in our discernment of what's of God, what's good, and what's not so much. We're strengthened with power in our being. It changes who we are and keeps us in tune with God and who he's made us to be. And then we're strengthened by power in our doing. William Barclay describes it in terms of our will. So often we know that what, so often we know what is right and mean to do it, but our will is not strong enough to back our knowledge and to carry out our intentions. So as we think about being strengthened by power in our inner being, we're strengthened by his power in our knowing, in our being, and in our doing. And then verse 17, as we've already thought about, encourages us that Christ will become more and more. As we know more about him, as we're made into that person he's made us to be, and as we do more of what he calls us to do, that Christ becomes more and more at home within us. And that in itself becomes an increasing source of power to be who he calls us to be and to do as he calls us to do. So, for those who have seen the meeting plan and are worried that there are three thoughts, that's the first one and it was relatively quick and painless, hopefully. So, we're strengthened by power through his spirit. As we move on in our time together now, we look forward to receiving the message from the Sonsters. Thank you, Steve.
had the substance of this thing. And I'm sorry if it seemed like I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I think he's uh, out of the ants in the garden and I've gone to his pants today, so there you go. So, as we move on in our text for today, and as we move on to verse 18 of our reading, we come across a second and different kind of power. Whereas in verses 16 and 20, we're reading about the extraordinary divine force by which Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, a force that now pulses through Christian believers, people like you and people like me. In this verse, in verse 18, Paul is writing about our power, our ability to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Having thought about Christ being at home within us, this second mention of power affirms that he doesn't come in by force, but that, like the Holman Hunt painting, thank you John, I don't know how well you can see that, he waits for us to invite him in. Lord, the substance of just that, I would clasp my hand in mine, your faithful follower, I will be, it's that intent, it's that decision, that choice for ourselves to let Christ in and then to let Christ do what he would for us. As we become more and more at one with Christ, we experience more of his love for us, more of his love in us and more of his love through us. Two things are emphasised in the verses that we've shared together today, one being God's power and the other being God's love. And although we're thinking about God's power today, verses 17 to 19 really focus our mind on God's love and our comprehension of it. It's said that for St Jerome, the cross, I didn't need a PowerPoint for this one, the cross symbolises that love, not just in what Christ did for us there, but in its shape. It points up and down and left and right, or north and south and east and west. It's all-encompassing. In pointing up, it can be seen to be pointing to the best of the world around us, and in pointing down, it can be seen to be pointing to the worst and then reaching across, it can be seen to be embracing all of humanity and all of what we know of the world around us. Embracing those people who we see and think to be moving towards God, as well as those moving away. Last week our Bible reading included verses that Victoria and I had at our wedding. And our next song was sung at our wedding although to the songster arrangements. But there are words to ask, have you, have you ever stopped to think how God loves you? Because our reading today tells us it's as high as the sky, and it's as deep as the sea, and it's as wide as the world, is God's love for you and for me. There are words that remind us that in whatever changes in the world around us today, God's love is reliable and stays the same. It's the song that we sing to the last tune we can't sing sitting down, and it's a song that if you fancy moving, you can in the chorus, because we can sing it's as high as the sky, and it's as deep as the sea, it's as wide as the world, Nelly's got actions here, God's love, but I was going to do something different. So you can do your actions. I don't know what Brian will think, Billy, but uh, anyway, if you know your own actions, you can. God's love for you and you. We can't escape his love or take ourselves out of his care. So where can we run or is it hide from his love? His love is everywhere. So if you want to do that, if you want to sing and come along, then please do. We'll stand as we sing the... Uh, it's song number 29 if you're following in the summary, the three verses.
space for our life we have seen. Well, you can take part again now as we share in our offering together, and following that, the band will bring their message to us. Thank you.
Thank you to the band for their ministry and their ministry to us today. Thank you for that choice. Song number 353, if you want to mark it in your songbook for later. If you want to remember what it is that I'm going to be talking about today, then those words of the third verse. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. So in faith, we're invited to receive from him. Be still. We recognise your presence with us, as the band have just reminded us. We recognise your power that's moving through this place. We recognise your power that's at work within us. And so, Lord God, in these final moments, we pray that we'd be strengthened by that power in what we know, in who we are and what we do. We pray that as we've thought about grasping your great love for us, we would grasp what it is that you have to say to us in these final moments. And that we'd respond faithfully as we prepare to go from this place into the week ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, we've thought about how God's power strengthens us. We've thought about our ability to embrace his great love for us. And so now, if you've still got your Bibles open, we arrive at verses 20 and 21. Words that in the Amplified Version say, Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose, and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think. Now to him who is able to do infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Eugene Peterson's interpretation of those words is, God can do anything. Thank you. God can do anything. God can do for us, William Barclay writes, more than we can dream of. bit of an anticlimax. Do we believe that God can do anything? God can do for us more than we can dream of. And if that's the case, what limitations are we facing in our life of faith? And who puts them there? Reflecting on this verse, Joyce Meyer encourages us to cooperate with God's power working through us and to stretch our faith into new realms that go beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. We had a lovely group of young people here with us last week and we prayed for those young people, those children, those families who are associated with our church family here. And uh, I had a bit of a challenge, but as it is, you'll have to entertain me this morning by playing along, if that's alright. Because my question was going to be, and you may have seen this before, so if you have, uh, play along again. But my question was going to be to the young people, do they think I could fit through this sheet of paper? <laughs> yes. You're not playing along. <laughs> you must have seen it before. 
And then I would have gone, well, actually, let's, let's make it even more difficult. Because uh, unlike our poor Sergeant Major, I'm not a slim, healthy, active man. So let's cut that in half. And I mean, to be fair, I haven't practiced cutting it in half. So this, this could backfire. But I was going to say, who thinks I could fit through this piece of paper? C3? Yes! <laughs> He's got faith. And then what I'd say is I'd, I'd give them a pair of scissors very carefully, obviously, and I'd invite them to try and cut a hole in this piece of paper big enough for me, big old me, to fit through. And so hopefully they might have butchered it, which would have been effective for the point of the illustration. Because really, if you just cut a hole in the middle of that, there's no way that I'm going to fit through it. But if you do some cutting, and I'm left-handed, and what I should have done is brought one along that I've done earlier, <laughs> for the blue Peter fans. What's that? They're not round those scissors. There they go, no. <laughs> the wrong kind of scissors. But I've cut it like that, and then I've cut down here, excuse me a moment, probably doesn't make good recordings, so sorry for those online. I've cut, 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 cut. Have you seen this before? Yes. Some are, some are saying no. So I've cut the paper in lots of different ways. And then I'm just going to try not to mess it up with this last little bit. Slice along the edges. And then I'm expecting lots of applause and whooping. <laughs> If I've done it right, and I'm left-handed and I've just been let loose with some scissors, so there's every chance I have. But oh, I didn't rip it. So, there we go, thank you. <laughs> and I put that there as a reminder. What might seem impossible or beyond our wildest dreams can become possible as God's power does its thing in us. Over the next few weeks we're going to be thinking about a famous biblical dreamer. Any guesses? Joseph, that's right. So no, I'm not telling you that so you don't have to come along by the way. It would be nice to see you soon. Uh, maybe this week as we look ahead to that series, thinking about Joseph, you want to open your Bible at Genesis 37. And uh, just in little instalments, look at his story which runs through to the end of the book of Genesis chapter 50. But as we spend this time together today thinking about God's power and how he can make the impossible possible, and as we prepare to think about Joseph in the coming weeks, my big question is this. What are our dreams for this place? And what are our dreams for what God can do in shame? Maybe just thinking about it now, we want to say, what are your dreams for what God can do in you? Think about it. Pray about it this week. Write something down and put it in an envelope so that in six weeks, six months, six years time you can open it up again and see what God has done and although the words we've thought about today encourage us that actually these things happen through God's work within us the spirit strengthens us in our knowing and being on our understanding of the dreams that God is stirring up in us and God's spirit strengthens us in our doing what God invites us to do in making, in making those dreams happen. And so we're going to take a moment to respond to that thought, to take some time to respond to those questions for ourselves this morning. And we're going to do it using song number 836, if you're following the song book. It's a worship chorus. Although I know it as a singing company song, Millie was saying that she didn't recognise it. Dan thought that people would have an idea of the melody. But there are words that say,
day, God is able, more than able, yes, to do the everyday stuff that we come to him for, but God is able, more than able, to do much more than you and I could ever dream. He's able, more than able, to make us who he wants us to be. That's a promise for us individually. And that's a promise for us together this morning. And so we're going to sing these words twice through. And as we sing, if you want to bring your prayers to this special place of prayer, then there's the invitation to do so. If you want the Spirit's power to grasp what dreams it is he's stirring up in you, or to see what he's calling you to do, then there's the opportunity to do so. everyday things. The mornings when we wake up feeling under the weather. The mornings when we wake up and we're not sure whether we're going to be able to do everything that we'd hoped to do that day. Those mornings when we wake up and feel like everything is going our way. Help us not to forget you. Help us to remember that you're able to meet with us, to meet with us in our everyday living. But Lord God, thank you also that as we've thought about through the words from Ephesians today and the words that we've just sung, that you're able to do much more than we could ever dream. And Lord God, as we think about that, all kinds of things might come to mind, things in our personal life. Things to do with health, with grief, with practical things, in terms of where we're living, working, whatever it might be. We're able to do more than we can dream. And might we experience that in our faith too? As your power increases in us and through us, as we're strengthened in our inner being, might we know more of who you are? and more of who you want us to be. And might we be that person 
in our everyday life. And not how our actions flow from that person who you've made us and who you want us to be. And Lord God, those incredible things that we can dream up on our own. Might we experience more and more of those things in our life with you, in and through our lives, in and through this place, for the community here has shown that we might see other people inviting you into their lives, being strengthened by your power in their inner beings, so that through their lives, you might do more than they could dream as well. Oh God, we ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So our closing song this morning comes from the Magnified Songbook, so I'm afraid unless you've come very well prepared, you're going to have to use the words on the screen. But so if you've got a Magnified Songbook at home, it works to uh, song number 49. And they're words that bring together a lot of what we've been thinking about today, particularly in the words of the chorus. Lord, they say, reign in me, reign in your power above all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? I don't know how well you know uh, this one. There's two verses, a chorus and a key change. Is that right, Dan? Brian? Yeah, there we go. If we get that, if we get that. If we get that. <laughs> the band are filling me with optimism. There you go. So we're going to stand and we're hopefully going to sing these words straight through. Thank you, band. <laughs> Gently within us. 
and son. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all the name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.